This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 44 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast, a podcast focused on telling you the stories of dreamers, makers, innovators, and influencers. Along the way, we'll give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Our guest on today's episode is Mary Shores. More about Mary in a moment. Our guest on Thursday's episode is Eric Reed. Eric is a well-known piano player and has played with some of the greatest jazz musicians of all time. I met him in 1998 when he was playing with Wynton Marcellus. It started my passion for jazz music. It's a super fun episode, so make sure to check out Thursday's episode with Eric Reed. Now let's jump into today's episode with Mary Shores. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host, and it is a privilege to have you along for today's episode with Mary Shores. Before we jump into today's episode, I want to encourage you, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, go on over and click that subscribe button. You can find the Jumble Think Podcast in all of your favorite places to listen to podcasts, but we've made it even easier if you like to listen through iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. If you like listening through iTunes or Apple Podcasts, swing on over to jumblethink.com slash iTunes, jumblethink.com slash iTunes. And if you like it on Spotify, swing on over to jumblethink.com slash Spotify. Either of those links will take you directly to the iTunes app or Spotify and to the JumbleThink podcast. So take a moment now and subscribe to the JumbleThink podcast. Now let's learn a little bit more about today's guest, Mary Shores. My name is Mary Shores and my role at my business is as CEO as well as founder. So I think of myself as the strategic thinker of the company or I think of myself as the person who is talking through the megaphone to deliver the strategy and the mission of our company to my staff and my team and my vendors and clients. So what my business does is we are a full service collection agency, which means that I am a debt collector by trade. And our mission is to help people feel good about paying their debt because having a debt is a psychological burden. And it's a burden that gets, it, it's like it builds a brick wall in between people and living the life of their dreams. It's always so interesting to talk about when did I know this is what I wanted to do? Because the truth is that when I was a little girl, I used to always play bank in my garage. And I always knew that I wanted to be a businesswoman. But really, the collection agency came in the form of an opportunity, a door of opportunity that was opened for me. And I chose to walk through that door. So it wasn't like in the beginning, I had this mad passion to want to start a collection agency. That was the opportunity that I was given. And and, and looking back, I'm so glad that I took that opportunity. A great story about how I find significance and purpose in what I do is when I see the impact of my work in the world. So whether that be through the company that I own, whether that be through the development of my staff, or whether that be through my following and my readers, when I receive when I receive these letters of appreciation from people, it really just impacts me in a way that I could never have thought of. Or when I see that spark of knowing in another person. You know, I feel like that I've built this incredible, this incredible workforce around me. And I haven't done that because I've always been the natural or best leader. I haven't done that because I've um, always made the best decisions, but I've been able to build this workforce because my company is built on a mission. And so I feel like the story is really not, not so much as a specific story, but it's in so much of how our purpose evolved over time because purpose has become this thing that's almost like it's elusive living behind a closed curtain and we're waiting to go through a journey to discover what it is when the truth is that your purpose, your true purpose and what will put you most on your path is to understand just simply what is it that you're good at and then find ways to do that in the world. 
I believe that what I do matters so much because I see my role as extremely important in the culture that we live in today. There, you know, in this country, we have an issue with debt. And the the problem is not the debt in and of itself, but it's the way we think about debt. It's the shame and the unworthiness that is associated with the debt. You know, when I hear about students who are really overstressed out about their student loans or, you know, the truth is that if someone has a debt, it will stop them from applying for the same job. It will stop them from uh, applying for a home mortgage even. It just stops them dead in their tracks from living their dreams. And it's time as, as a culture that we break through that thinking. You know, we don't have to look at debt that way. It doesn't have to be this negative stigma or this consequential this consequential action. So I see my work in the world as really making a dent in the collective consciousness of our country of how we are treating people that have a debt. It's time to, I feel like it's been really dehumanized and it's time to bring the humanity back into that trade. Well, I'm going to be really honest and tell you a huge challenge that just happened in my business. And actually, it just happened yesterday. And that is that um, I had a staff member who's been with me for quite a long time. um, Really, I mean, for lack of better words, I'm going to say I feel stabbed in the back. I feel like this... I feel like I was in a situation where someone was presenting to them, to me, that they are one way in the world, when the truth is that they're really a very another person, another person altogether. And so um, I'm really working my way through this, knowing that what my intention in the situation has been all along. My intention has been to support this person in their role and in their growth, and that you know whatever their t- intention has been is on them and their own integrity. But I can tell you that when those moments happen and as an entrepreneur, when you feel taken advantage of or when you feel that hit, that just it knocks you over or it knocks you in this deep, dark hole, the the challenge is settling it within your mind, being able to climb out of that dark hole so that you can see the light again and be focused on how you're moving forward. Oh, so many goals. So right now I'm working on creating a training program that teaches my communication strategy to lots of other businesses. So I've been teaching my communication strategy. That's all, um, it's designed to help people build rapport and trust with their clients and customers. I've called it words that work for years. It's I talk about it a lot in Conscious Communications, the book, but I just believe that there are ways that you can create these deeper connections in your life. And so I want to create this um, very in-depth training program and also bring that to the collection agencies as well as a lot of it in healthcare and anyone that has like a consumer focus to their business. In a moment, we'll be back with our interview portion of our conversation with Mary Shores. One of our dreams here at JumbleThink is to help more people figure out who they are, the passions they have, and what they were created to do. So today I'm asking for your help. Think of that person that isn't living up to their potential. Maybe they have a dream or idea and they just don't know how to get there. And all I want you to do is share this podcast with them. You could do it through a social channel like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. You could do it through a text message or even an email, but no matter what, we would love your help getting the word out about Jumble Think so that more people can hear this important message that you were created for purpose and you have so much to offer this world. So thank you so much for taking time out to share our podcast with your friends, family, coworkers, or anyone else you think could use this message. Now let's return to our interview with Mary Shores. Our guest today is Mary Shores. Super excited to have you on the podcast. Thanks for taking time out to be on JumbleThink. My pleasure. It's absolutely exciting to be here. Your intro segment, as we dove into those questions, one thing that stood out to me is the sheer passion you have for people and that whether it's an employee and uh, things that are going on there or whether it's a client or a person that your company is trying to reach out to, People are the center of what you do. It's very much something that you can hear in your voice that you're passionate about. When did this compassion 
really become a fundamental part of how you view business? That passion is so ingrained into who I am as a person. And I'll be really honest with you that it came about in a lot of early childhood and young adult tragedies. So I'm very much a product of things that happened early on in my life that built a very resilient character um, in my that because um, I was out on my own at 16. So I'm very much a rags to riches type of story. And the circumstances around that don't really matter. It wasn't tragic. I wasn't like on drugs. It was, it was simply that I was in an unstable home and I, I no longer had a place to live. Wow. And as well as um, I lost a child at a very young age. And so I saw things in life that you just can't unsee. I lived and slept on the emergency room floor of of children's, the children's hospital in Indianapolis, Riley's children's hospital, as I was going through this, um, my daughter who was profoundly brain damaged, which looks like her being blind, her being deaf, her being unable to even swallow. So she had to have a tube surgically inserted into her stomach just to be able to receive nutrients. And I think that there's a, the, people are very interested in how did I, how did I live through that? It's such a, tender age and then bounce back and start this company at the age of 24. And the truth to that is like, it wasn't from this place of great ambition. It was actually the opposite of feeling like I really wasn't worth much. So I didn't think I would get a job that would pay me what I, what my peers in life we're making. Because at this point, you know, friends were graduating from college and they were getting these great jobs and and I didn't think I would get those offers. So my alternative to that was to take control of my own destiny by starting a business. That's, That's an incredible story. For you in that process, one of the things that you obviously dealt with was dealing with shame and self worth and your value and, and seeing the value that you actually had and getting uh, like across that, that place of going from self value question mark to seeing the value that you bring to others. I think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs or people in that journey of like going, I feel like I'm created for something big. I feel like there's more that I have to offer. They really struggle with how can they learn from your story and really bridge that, that, that chasm of self doubt, self value, dealing with all the shame and, and step into this place of of finding wholeness and taking the risks and knowing I have something valuable to offer and I'm going to step into that. You know, I, the last thing you said is really the secret to it all. Um, what they can learn from me is not necessarily in in any kind of in any kind of like what I created or what I've been able to do. But I think that sometimes we study we study the celebrity. You know, we get yeah. excited about the Michael Jordans of life when really what we need to do is we need to study and get excited over their process. Wow! Like what was that person's process to get where they are? And for me, um, going back to that last thing you said, stepping into it, what I tell people is just take one step in a new direction. Because sometimes if we think in terms of that big idea, it can become overwhelming. And I don't, um, I don't operate well in overwhelm. When I, when I get overwhelmed, you know, my body chemistry, and this is true for all of us. And it's, it's in chapter three of my book, like how important it is that we understand how powerful we really are. And then to step into that power is really putting yourself in this place of empowerment. Because let me tell you something, everything you create from a place of empowerment is going to show up stronger, faster, better. And here's the thing. It's going to be longer lasting and more impactful. Now, if we flip that, we put that on the flip side. And when we're feeling disempowered, um, everything we create from that disempowerment or when we're responding to something out of fear, that's where the stress lies. That's where the chaos is, the uncertainty, the things not working out, or when you feel like you're just walking through cement. And so people always ask me, well, especially as someone who's come from a background of tragedy, how do you go from that fear to that empowerment? Because empowerment's been this big buzzword lately. (laughs) And so I need to like, I love demystifying buzzwords. Right. All empowerment is, is like, let's look at it as from a place of, like you said, that knowing that you're meant to do something. So that is just following that intuition. And then empowerment becomes this place when you know inside, outside, backwards and forwards, what 
the direction that you want to move. And then when you think of it is like in your wellness, how do you feel on a scale of one to 20? Okay. And the time to take action is when you're at like a 17 on okay. that scale. All right. All right. You move forward at a 17. That's the empowerment I'm talking about. Mm. Now let's say you're at a seven, which yesterday I was at like a two. Wow. Then here's the thing. Just don't create anything. Okay. That's the time to to, to, you know, we hear this other word, self-care. Okay. I feel like if you're in my generation, Gen X, you don't even, <laughs> self-care is like not even on the radar, right. but the millennials, they understand self-care much better. Yeah. But like, let's put a definition to self-care as in self-care is just taking space for yourself. Love that. And however you take that space and whatever that looks like for you. That's, that's really powerful. Uh, and I, I think... Often we're so outward focused that we don't take the moment to be introspective and get good metrics for how we're feeling and the things that we need and, and what we've got to process. How can we make more time to do that when we're so busy in our culture, in our society, things are always moving fast paced. And, 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 and with technology, it seems like it's not getting any slower. It's actually speeding up much quicker. How can we take and really be purposeful about getting a gauge of where we're at and making the changes, changing that mindset and, and coming up with that time for yourself, that season for yourself to get healthy. Okay. So you just said something super important. Okay. When I'm talking about self-care, that is when it is in this place of like, you, you've been kicked. It's okay. time to bring yourself back up. Yeah. But overall, taking time for yourself doesn't necessarily fit into the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, I heard Gary V, who I'm a huge fan of, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. I heard him say, he, he was talking to this millennial and he said, how much time did you spend doing something other than working last weekend? And then she said, whatever she said. Yeah. And he said, whatever your answer is, that is more time than in my entire 20s. Wow. And I love that response. And let me tell you why. If you're building a business, if you're following a dream, if you are if you are investing in your passion, in your mission in life, you have to get through what I call the short-term squirm. Okay. Because you are you are focused on the prize. You are keeping your eye on the prize. And so sometimes I think that we get this jam session of balance, this word balance yeah. of making sure that we're taking care of ourselves. When as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, I think it's really important that when you love your work and you make it your own, you don't necessarily need as much of that quote unquote off time or balance time. Because for me, honestly, it's hard for me to not get up and do what I do. Yeah. And um, I just want to, I just, I know I, I didn't make a line in the sand about that, but something else you said, um, it really makes me want to also say this. When you're an entrepreneur, you're so often pulled in so many different directions. And, and one thing that, that I'm very confident about in my life, because I'm at an age where a lot of people are just starting their entrepreneur journey and mm. I'm 20 years in. Yeah. So I've already been doing this 20 years. I've already become a best-selling author. Like I've already, you know, been teaching my workshops, been been out there spreading my message. But I still even fall into the trap of being pregnant with 17 different things when the the solution, because I'm all about solutions and keeping things simple. I have what I call the core four. And the core four is what are the four main areas of my business or of my life that I am going to focus on? Now, this is different than a goal. It's an area of focus and you can choose four of them. And then what you do with that is you want to look at your activities and anything that you're doing that doesn't match up with one of those cores, you need to raise a red, yellow flag and say, do I need to be doing this? Because one of the things that I notice is I'll chase rabbit holes because <laughs> I'll get excited about like this shiny thing over here and then this opportunity over here. But now I know if it doesn't line with the core four, I just say no. Yeah. Because that allows me to put all, you know, you will succeed if you triple down on a few things instead of being all over the place with so many things. 
Well, and I love what you're saying there because I think it's easy to go after the shiny new thing because it's exciting and there's so much to do around it. And, and, and it's attractive to say, oh, I've been in the grind of dealing with whatever I'm focused on right now. I, I could just spend the next couple of days doing this new idea, this new thing, and, and maybe it will blow up and it will be awesome. And in that, we lose our focus and we lose our intentionality to get through the things that are difficult to get to the things that bring value, to bring breakthrough, to bring change in, in what we're doing, to see the, the final outcome of these things. And I think so often many of us, and especially millennials, uh, the shiny new thing is very easy to jump on and just go from thing to thing. What are some things people can do to keep that hyper focus on those, like you mentioned, four things that are core? How can they really you know, keep that focus when shiny things are always popping up? Well, I think that um, I love the question because it's so easy to do, you know, because things seem so amazing and we can get excited about it and we get that push of adrenaline and, and that rush of excitement over it. And so what I typically do is um, I actually write down my core four and the core four goes into a bit of a bigger teaching where you're actually going to write a one page action plan for each of those things. Okay. And then, you know, keeping your eye on that prize means that you really realize that um the ultimate goal is getting to some sort of finish line. Yeah. And you never get to that finish line if you start chasing all of these things. So what I do is when the the um, extra opportunities come in, I'm just really open and honest with people. And I say, you know what? I love the idea. And um, what I'd like to do is keep track of this. So I have like a master list okay. of, of all of these things. You know what it helps me do is it helps me th- it helps me create space in my brain because we only have so much brain space. Yeah, yeah. But if you just have a documenting system about, all right, I'm not necessarily closing the door on this opportunity, but I'm going to make a list of all of these opportunities that come around. Because here's the thing about the core four. It's not like you get rid of them all at the same time. Right. So you might have one of the core four that you've completed. And then when it's time to put a new one in, you can go back to your list. There's some sort of synchronistic magic that happens here. When you write down this core four, and and you know, those of us that that understand how and why we're creating our own realities, we realize that there is this massive power in the ability to focus. Yeah. When we look at people that have been the greats throughout history, Tesla, Einstein, Newton, you know, when we look at these people, what we see is they have this hyper focus. They have this ability to just tune everything out. Right, right. Right. And so we can do that too. I'm not saying we have to take it to that extreme, but sometimes if we just feel like we're not missing out, because we have that FOMO, you know? Yeah. So if we just can get rid of that fear of missing out where we, d- we, we put that on a, on a list and then when one of those core fours opens up, we can go to that list and we can say, what's the next thing we want to pursue? But going back to the synchronistic magic that happens, when you put all of your power into the core things that you should be doing, you're going to be amazed at the opportunities that show up that actually align with those four things. So just by and I don't know how to explain it, but just by being intentional about what your core four is will somehow, like a magnet, bring those opportunities to you that match up with those things. I can't explain how and why that happens, but it happens to me all the time. Well, I want to take a moment and really define core four a little bit more because I, you know, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur myself, I, I look at all the things that I have to do, whether it's billing and accounting and, you know, uh, client work, client meetings, there's so much going on with the business. Um, and whether it's myself or a team member doing it, it's, it's all getting assigned to someone. When we're talking about the core four, we're not necessarily talking about product offerings or things like that. We're talking about, uh, what are we talking about? State, thank you so much for the question. So you're talking about all the moving parts. Right. Accounting, billing, client relationships, meetings, scheduling, you know, what's going on with our website. Those are all 
those are all the moving parts. Those are the cogs and the wheels of your business, right? Right, right. And those those need to those need to run like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. And so the best way to get those things to run like a well-oiled machine is to have documented work instructions for everything. Systems. That's a conversation. Yes, systems and processes. Yeah. That's a conversation for another time. Right. The way that the core four differs is if I were to ask you, where do you want to be at in two years? then your mind will automatically start thinking of things that need to happen. So it might be, you know, it might be a deep issue that needs to be fixed. It might be, um, I'm going to share with you what mine are, okay? Okay. And I'm going to tell you how I came up with those. So we had a period of about two years of heavy investment time in our company recently where we invested in creating a new brand. We invested in um, a new website. We invested in a new key level employee that had to be trained. And so after that two year period of investment time, it makes sense that now one of the core focuses is going to be sales. Okay. So it's just the focus is bringing in new business, bringing in new clients, sales. Um, That was not the focus two years ago because the focus two years ago was investing. It was in creating the image for the company that we wanted. Okay. So that's one of them. Another focus is industry involvement. And so industry involvement for us meant like we were pursuing opportunities where we could um, speak and present at trade shows in specific industries that complement our services and getting involved deeply in those industries. So whether that meant joining an education committee. So you see how it's not the details. It's just we're focused on our industry. Yeah, yeah. And then a third one was creating custom training. So one of the things that we've been doing is we have been going into companies on a corporate level and creating custom trainings for their reps so that I can go in there and teach them communication strategy and teach them like how to use this with their customers. So that is one of the core four. And then the last one was just really, and the last one was kind of an easy one. So you want, you know, it's nice if you have one that's kind of a no brainer, but the last one was just incorporating our branding into everything. So now that we have invested in this branding, um, the next step was looking at all of our documents and saying, does this have a branded feel? It's, you know, how can we really, uh, I call it upping our game, but it's like upping our branding game. Okay. And so that's the four things. So what you didn't hear was moving parts. Right, right. You heard focus and you didn't also hear a goal. You didn't hear like, I want to create a million dollars in sales in the next 12 months. You didn't <laughs> right. hear that, right? right? Right. So that doesn't mean that we don't have goals because the core four is really based on the goals. Mm. So if I were to ask you, where do you want your business to be in two years? Your answer is whatever it is. And then your core four are the things that will support you to get there. What are the things we need to focus on to, to, to make that goal become true? Love that. So, so, so good. One of the things that we're going to pivot here a little bit. One of the things that was, uh, that stood out to me in your story was, uh, getting around or getting into things that challenge you to change your thinking for you. One of the things that you mentioned in your bio is the unleash the power within, uh, event with Tony Robbins really impacted you to make shifts and changes that it became a catalyst to moving forward. How can we use those kind of things in our entrepreneurial journey mm-hmm. to challenge us, to push us further, or, or even going deeper, what are some of the things that we can be doing to help us you know, get out of the routine to go and, and challenge us to go somewhere we're not, where we've not been yet? So fascinating of a question. So one thing that I realize that makes me fundamentally different than almost every person that I've ever known is that I think differently. Yeah. Um, The way that my mind works just seems to be completely different than most people. And that's okay. Um, Caused me a little bit of problems when I was, you know, in my younger years. And, um, 
But I recognize it now as being this like multidimensional thinker and and really be able using that to my advantage. Everything is mindset. Everything you say, everything you do, every word that comes out of your mouth, every action you take, every choice you make in the thinnest sliced moments of life is either creating a deeper connection to what you want or it's driving a disconnection. And so when we think about this mindset shift that we need to go through, that power of the mind lies in each and every one of our subconsciouses. And here's the thing. If our subconscious and our behaviors and our habits and our beliefs and all of this stuff is installed, which we now understand in our early childhood, that is what's running the show. Yeah, yeah. But here's the magical part. We get to install the program. Okay. We get to be in charge of the program. Now, I'm not saying that that's like snap your fingers and change your programming, <laughs> but the possibility exists for us to constantly, every single day, be looking at the seeds we are planting in our subconscious mind. Because you know what? I could have become a statistic. Right. I could have at 16 years old, I could have become a victim. I could have, I mean, I could tell you, you know, even more tragic things that have happened in my life, but instead I decided to always invest back into myself. Mm. So when my daughter had this brain injury, you know, I went to work, I went to the library. Um, I have a son on the spectrum. He's brilliant. He's has Asperger's. And the thing is like, that is what gave me the, such this gift to start to study neurology because um, where I really excel is understanding human behavior from this trifecta of neurology, psychology, and neurochemistry okay. and how that all works together because we're taking on these impacts to our nervous system constantly. And so the way that we control the programming is in each and every thin sliced moment. You know, we hear people like Eckhart Tolle say the power of now. And I have to be honest with you, things like that drive me nuts because as an entrepreneur, sometimes it's hard to be in that present moment. Right. Like I don't understand what that means because I'm always thinking about the future. Yeah. So what I realized is that present moment, that power of now lies in the fact that right now you are making a choice. And whatever that choice is, it is going to move you closer to what you want. It's going to create that deep connection or it's going to drive a disconnection. And so if you can just train yourself to always move through that door, create that connection, I call it cleanse or clog in the book. Everything you're doing is either cleansing or clogging you. And it's just that simple. Yeah. Love that. I can relate to that uh, and what you're saying about thinking differently and, and approaching the world from a different angle than other people do, which is a hard thing to do when you think and process differently than the general public in a lot of ways. You wrote a book. You've mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, I want to mention that and kind of talk a little bit more about that. And the book's called Conscious Communication, a step-by-step -step guide to harnessing the power of your words to change your mind, your choices, and your life was skimming through some of the sections of the book. And one of the things that jumped out to me, and I think it really applies to what you were just talking about uh, with mindset and, and neur neurology and different things like that was uh, you have a segment in there where you talk about what you should and shouldn't be saying uh, and things like not and no and things like that are things that you really recommend getting out of your vocabulary. How can what we say and... Um, how we communicate reinforce how we think and how can pivoting how we communicate really dive into uh, that, that change that we're longing for in changing ourselves and the culture around us? Sure. So let me give a little bit of context to what you're talking about for the audience. Absolutely. So we have what is called the do not say list. And the do not say list is part of the communication strategy that I was talking about. And what I have noticed is in any kind of customer service situation, and you know, think about it, Michael, how often do you call customer service and you feel do you typically feel happier at the end of those calls or more frustrated? Most of the time, I'm just happy if I can talk to somebody. So most of the time, I'm leaving <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> and it's such an interesting paradigm because like the whole intention of customer service is to serve the customer. Right. But so often as customers, we don't feel served in any way. And so my study of neurology led, led, led me to a place of understanding how words interact with the nervous system of the body. Okay. And so when I realized that I could eliminate language that triggered people's nervous system, or in other words, it put them in their fight or flight. Okay. So that frustrated feeling in a customer is all controlled by the words that the representative says to them. 
them. So in that situation, like when you do get a human person on the phone, and then the first thing they start telling you is, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Our policy is and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's triggering you. Right. And so the first thing I did was study the words that trigger people and then replace them with the words that stimulate what we call the parasympathetic nervous system, okay. or it's the rest and digest. So there's words you can say that create a deeper connection, and there's words that you say that will drive a disconnection. Now, this is really meant for a business communication situation, yeah. so it's perfect for entrepreneurs. Um, but what happened was people that were taking this training, they started to change their lives. So people were coming back to me and they were saying, you know, Mary, this is this is changing my life. So that do not say list when it comes to personal development really became sort of that crazy roommate in our head. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yep, I know for sure. <laughs> All right. So this crazy, this crazy roommate in your head has this running commentary of constantly telling you how bad you suck. Yeah. And we can catch that in the involuntary words that, that we say to ourselves and to other people. But one of the ways that we program our subconscious mind is with the words that we speak. So uh, my own personal story with this is that for 10 years, I wanted to write a book. I mean, this was like this mad, passionate desire that I had to write a book like I could taste it. And so words are a mirror to your subconscious mind. And when you hear me say, the words, I want to write a book. It's like you can see that written on my soul, mm. like a purpose that I came in with this knowledge to write this book. But I have a real problem, Michael, when the next words that come out of my mouth are, but I'm not a writer. Mm. Because those words are also revealing something about my subconscious. And what it's doing is it's showing me that I have a belief system that is not in alignment with my dream of writing a book. And this is not at all about writing because how often do we say, I want to start this business, but I don't have the money or I don't have the time or I don't have the support or I don't have the education when the truth is that's a belief system. Right. And so I don't feel like I need to go back to 10 years of therapy and figure out who in the second grade told me I wasn't capable of writing. The answer was I needed to invest in myself. So if you can catch those involuntary words um, and you hear what you're saying, almost like a mantra. That is the way that words are programming you. Because every time I was saying the words, I'm not a writer, I was reinforcing that neural network in my subconscious mind that enforced the fact that I was never going to write a book. So the first step is like the way my mind works is a lot of times I need to see the evidence to change the beliefs. Okay. So the moment I went to a writer's workshop and I wrote my first short story and I read it to the class and it was a story about my daughter who passed away in 1993. It was a story about raising my son on the autism spectrum and just what a lonely world that is when you have absolutely no rule book of how to raise this child. And I paralleled those two things with the roller coaster journey of my entrepreneurial life. And at the end of the at the end of me sharing that story, no one said, uh, "Honey, you're not a writer." People came <laughs> up to me; they were moved to tears. Wow. wow! And and I got hugs. And it was like this moment where my brain, my subconscious, saw the evidence that it needed to change the vernacular, to change the narrative that was happening in my head. And here we go with awakening the power of the words, mm. because that's all it took was me to take one step in a new direction, to get one step out of that comfort zone yeah. and to just... I had nothing to lose. I was at a retreat. Who cares? It was such an easy thing to do. And within seven months of that day, I had a book deal with my dream publisher, Hay House. Wow. It's incredible. In, in changing that approach of understanding desire versus belief, and often our desires are leading us forward where, I'll, where our beliefs are holding us back and making that change in beliefs uh, so that it meets our desires and we make the things that are burning inside of us, a reality is such a powerful mind shift. It totally is. I have this thing. Um, it's in the last chapter of my book, but I call it creating your menu. Okay. And I'm like, you know, if you think about life in terms of a menu, yeah. You, if you go into a restaurant, you really can't, if you want to go to a sushi restaurant and order a cheeseburger, you can't do that because you can only order what's on the menu. Right. 
So it's like we create, our belief systems are like our menu Mm. of what we create for ourselves. And so one of the exercises, there's coaching exercises all throughout the book, but one of them is to create for yourself a new menu. Okay. Because in order, you know, it's so true, like we're powerful. And I believe that we're living in this time where most people accept that infinite possibilities are available to all of us. But we get so confused because what we think is infinite possibility means reaching our highest potential. Yeah. But the truth is possibility means anything could happen. Yeah. Infinitely anything. It's such a pers- it's such a spectrum of possibilities. It's like how do you connect yourself to the things that you actually want to have happen instead of swirling in that chaos and uncertainty of everything that you cannot stand in your life? Well, I mean, I, I just think that one of the ways you can support that through yourself is like by creating this amazing menu of possibilities for yourself. And so I put on my menu a published book. Okay. I just put it on the menu. And then you had it. And then I had it. That's right. That's so good. It's been really fun chatting with you. I want to make sure as we wrap up this segment that people know how they can find your book. You also have a really cool program called the Daily Desire Diary that people can engage with. How can people connect and find you? Thank you for for asking. Um, My website is maryshores.com. That's S-H-O-R-E-S dot com. And that's where everything lives. So of course, you know, we have a Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, all of that great stuff. I love, love, love for people to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you send me a request, I'd be happy to receive that. And I always say, if you resonate with what I'm saying today and you really want to explore more about uh, my life or all all of the things that you can learn that are in conscious communications, please check out the book on Amazon. And um, you can also get it anywhere books are sold. But if you go on Amazon and you read the description and a handful of reviews, I truly believe you'll know right away if this book is for you or not. And then lastly, if you want to actually interact with me, um, I have a Facebook group called Fearless Ambition. And that is welcome to especially entrepreneurial thinkers. That's that's like kind of my sweet spot. Yeah. Very cool. And we'll include all of those links in the episode notes. So check it out there. And in a moment, we'll be back with Mary Shores and our rapid fire questions. We are growing the Jumble Think podcast and doing some exciting things going into the fall. We need your help. Here's what we need. We would love if you shared this podcast with your friends, family members, and acquaintances through your social channels, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever you like to connect with your community. Share the Jumble Think podcast, maybe this episode or your favorite episode. Let them know why they need to listen and how they can listen to the Jumble Think podcast. Thanks so much for taking time out to help us as we grow Jumble Think. Now let's jump into the rapid fire questions segment with Mary Shores. We are back with Mary Shores and rapid fire questions. Mary, are you ready for rapid fire questions? I do. I feel like I'm on a game show. I'm so excited. What is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? The one tip I would give somebody with a big idea or dream is to um, find somebody who has accomplished something very similar and maybe look at where they started. It's always important. Sometimes we get stuck because we don't know what the first steps are. So if you can just figure out those first few steps, it'll keep you going. So good. What is one change you would like to see in the world? I would love to see a change in the way that we process our debt collections or any in any any just sort of mindset around debt. I would love to see a change in that. What do you want your legacy to be? Hmm. It's a pretty big one. Um, (laughs) I want my legacy to be making a ripple or an impact that is helping to define this huge paradigm shift that we're going through as a culture. And I want to be involved in waking as many people up to the fact that we are absolutely in control of our own lives and that there's absolutely nothing that can stop us from achieving whatever it is we are meant to achieve. 
Where do you find inspiration? I find a lot of inspiration from my two teenage sons. They are okay. 17 and 18 and they inspire wow. me every single day. I, I don't know. I don't know how I got so blessed to have these two. You know, I've got one kid that's like a math genius and I got another kid that's like a wisdom genius. And so I feel so blessed. That's very cool. What is one book you think every dreamer or entrepreneur should read and why? I love James Altucher. Yeah, I love him too. Don't you love him? And okay, so gosh, right as soon as I said that, why did the name Choose Yourself? Yeah. That's the name of the book, Choose Yourself. That's a great book. Love it. What is one tool that is significant for the success of your business? I create these things called one page action plans. It's actually in the last chapter of the book, but it's where I just take um, a goal or something that I want to do, or maybe like one of these core fours and I reverse mm -hmm. engineer an action plan because I was never good at writing like those big drawn out business plans. And yeah. I've always relied on these one page action plans and they are quick and they are productive and they are lightning, lightning fast at how they really work. How do you start? and finish your day? I start my day with coffee. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> I love to get my juices flowing and I like to have coffee and I like to have a conversation with a like-minded person as early as possible in the day. So I'll typically start my appointments at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. because I find that if I can have a really cool conversation in the morning, it gets my juices flowing and it just makes my day so much more happier and energetic. And I typically end my day with um, some type of learning, like whether that be through YouTube, or reading. Um, I, I just love to wind down by feeding my mind with something that I find super interesting. Very cool. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what would you be doing? I would probably be a couple of different things. I would have loved to have been a fitness instructor. Okay. I just think that that is so much fun. I'm a, I'm a big group fitness junkie. I love kickboxing and all kinds of, you know, like body pump, weightlifting classes. It makes me feel like an athlete. And I, I always look at the, the fitness instructor on the stage as the superstar. I, I feel like they're, they're so giving in, in what they do. So I love that. Or another thing is I feel like I could be one of these jungle bunnies. Yeah. Like I could, <laughs> I could go live with the Polynesian kahunas and like live in Hawaii in a tree hut. I'd be perfectly happy. <laughs> Very fun. What is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Hmm. I am, I have a big dream of getting on bigger stages, presenting to, presenting to larger audiences and creating programs to support people through whatever it is that, that they need. You know, I've been blessed to be on a lot of stages and, and done a lot of speaking, and I'm just looking forward to doing more and more of that. It's just such a joy. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to leave you with giving us one last thought you want to let us hear. My, my last thought is that... Um, and I love to say this, but it's that everything you say, everything you do, every action you take, every choice you make in the thinnest sliced moments of life is really creating a deeper connection or it's driving a disconnection. Very, very cool. Mary, it's been a privilege to have you on the podcast. Thanks for taking time out to share your story and give us insights into your entrepreneur journey and then how we can apply the lessons you've learned to our own lives. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you so much. Once again, I want to thank today's guest, Mary Shores, for taking time out, sharing her story, and giving us amazing insights into how she approaches business. You can find links to Mary and what she's doing in the episode notes. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to thank you for tuning in. It means the world to me that you would listen to our podcast, and I hope it's impacted you and challenged you to go deeper, to chase those big ideas and dreams, and really create the world you want to live in. So I leave you with this. It's your turn to make action. Mary talked about taking a step in a new direction, and I encourage you today, if you've been going the same direction, it's not the direction you want to go, take that pivot, put your foot in a new direction, and start moving forward so you can see your dreams and ideas become a reality and change the world around you. Vous êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps vous pourrez vous décontracter 
même en travaillant.